Hello, uh, my name is Luba, I'm Russian. And uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Knight, for coming to Dubai. Uh, I saw many videos online and agree like for 80% what is written in Quran. Just now you said if I agree with 80% means all rest 20% is true. For me this 20% are main. So uh, I want to ask about love. I feel many Muslim people are afraid from God. In Christianity we have the most popular verse is John 3:16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only one son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but he will enter he will have eternal life In Christianity God calls people not not creation but child so he loves the world as i understood in Quran if you don't obey i don't love if you obey you're accepted in love can you please give your comments Sister, you said that I mentioned 80% has been proved to be 100% correct. Therefore, you have to believe in 20%. No. I said that 80% has been proved to be 100% correct as far as science is concerned. The remaining 20% neither right, neither wrong. If from that 20% even one verse was proved to be wrong, then I start doubting the Quran. There is not a single verse in the Quran which is proved to be scientifically incorrect. So is it clear? So, so as a scientific person, as a student of science, as a medical doctor, I use logic. When 80% is 100% correct, the remaining 20%, not even 0.1% is wrong. It's only ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. It's a logical belief, I start believing in the 20% also. Now coming to your question. That in Quran, people, people fear God. And in Bible, God is love. And he quoted chapter 3. Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16 and you said God so loved the world that he gave his only son sister which Bible are you referring to it's which NIV. version of the Bible are you quoting it's NIV NIV New, New International exactly. Version yes yes because in the King James Version the quotation says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son now begotten has been thrown out as an interpolation as a concoction, I agree with you. But coming to your question, only son, it's a mistake. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not the only son in the Bible. If you read the Bible, Ephraim was son of God. David was son of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So there's a mistake in the Bible that Jesus is the only son of God. So sister, there's a mistake in your NIV, New International Version. Jesus is not the only son of God. Ephraim is son of God. <laughs> David is son of God. So sister, there's a mistake in your Bible. Oh so how God. can you believe in a, in a book which has got mistakes? Leave us at 20%, even one mistake, kalas. The Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 82, Afala it is the Burun al Quran. Do they not ponder over the Quran? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. Even one contradiction, I don't agree to be the word of God. And I can't take out 100 contradictions in the Bible, sister. I'm not come all the way to Dubai to take out contradictions. I'm not here, I don't want to do that, sister. But coming to your question again, I'm not talking about love. And this is commonly question posed by the Christian missionary. You know, Islam is so tough and Christianity's love is love. Fine. Now what you have to understand that even in Quran, two places it says that Allah loves you. Quran also says, but at the same time when Allah loves you, Allah is also just. If I agree with your quotation, of John chapter 3 verse number 16 for God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten son whosoever believeth him shall have everlasting life that means if you believe in Jesus Christ khalas, you do anything you will get paradise correct sister uh, uh, yes, yes, yes yes correct very correct. good correct. that means say if suppose I start believing in Jesus I believe in Jesus I believe he's the messenger of God but I believe like how you believe that God so loved this world. That means Almighty God. He loved the world. Imagine someone loving the world. Imagine, suppose there is an owner of a company. He loves his employee. And he says, all the employee, you believe, I'm slaughtering my son. I'm slaughtering my son. And you believe he died for your sin. 
is it logical why will the boss of the company why will he slaughter his son and you believe in my son and i'm killing him and you will go to paradise does that make sense point number 2 if he's paid for your sin that means i can murder i believe in jesus and i commit murder i will go to heaven i believe in jesus i commit rape i'll go to heaven correct because my sins have been paid for correct sister that means according to your teaching even if any christian does murder if he rapes if he robs if he kills as long as he believes in jesus he will go to paradise correct Not that me. means your teaching is teaching that you can do in human things correct sister no not agree i mean not I mean, agree <laughs> sorry if, sister i am quoting <laughs> yes. god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him shall have that means you believe that jesus died for your sins peace be upon him you do anything in the world you will go to heaven this is the teaching of the church correct if you love if you love if you if. love god yes huh? if you love god yes if you love you god you do murder no problem sad, in islam if you love god you have to obey god you say you love god but you murder you love god you rape you, you love god you cheat you love god no you yeah. cannot you cannot if you, you love can. you cannot this is the teaching of the this is the difference between islam and christianity taught by the church i am talking about christianity taught by jesus christ peace be upon him sister there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete bible where jesus christ peace be upon him himself says that i am god or where is worship me sister if you can point out a single unequivocal statement if you can point out a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the bible from any version in the bible where jesus christ peace be upon him himself says that i am god or where is his worship me i dr zakir naik i'm ready to accept christianity today in fact if you read the bible jesus christ peace be upon him said it's mentioned in the gospel of john chapter number 14 verse number 28 jesus christ peace be upon him said he said my father is greater than i gospel of john gospel of john if you read it clearly is mentioned that i that my father is greater than i it further mentioned in gospel of john chapter number 10 verse number 29 that my father is greater than all it's mentioned in gospel of matthew chapter number 12 verse number 28 that i cast out devil with the finger of god gospel of luke chapter number 11 verse number 20 i with the finger of god cast out devil gospel of john chapter number 5 verse number 30 i can of my own self do nothing as i hear i judge and my judgment is just for i seek not my will but will of my father Jesus Christ never said that he was god he never claimed divinity it's clearly mentioned in the book of acts it's mentioned in the book of acts chapter number 2 verse number 21 e men of israel listen to this jesus of nazareth a man approved of god from amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which god did by him and you are witness to it a man approved of god amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which god did by him and you are witness to it no way did jesus christ peace be upon him said that he is god son of god means a godly person god bible bible if you read the bible god that got sons by the tons anyone who's led by the spirit of god is son of god in that meaning jesus christ is a messenger of god if you say in that context he's he son of god i've got no problem but he's not the begotten son he is not god almighty he was a messenger of god there is not a single unequivocal statement sister not a single unambiguous statement in the complete bible where jesus christ peace be upon him says i am god or he says worship me so where is the question of worshiping him where is the question of believing him that he died for your sins this is the teaching of the church sister do you believe in the bible or do you believe in the church for sure bible so which verse quote me one verse sister in the bible unambiguous unequivocal by jesus christ himself says he is god one only one okay i got it you got it you won so do you believe that jesus is not god i got it he's messenger of god mashallah that's good so do you believe there's one god sister yes i do believe okay sure. jesus christ also said jesus christ said in the gospel of john chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 i have many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now for he when the spirit of truth shall come he shall guide you unto all truth he shall not speak of himself all that here shall he speak he shall glorify me here jesus christ peace be upon him is talking about a messenger to come by the name of prophet muhammad peace be upon him sister do you believe in jesus christ peace be upon him um 
Jesus, peace be upon him. Yes, Jesus. Do you believe in him? He says there is another messenger to come. He yes. will guide you to all truth. Who is this messenger he's talking about? By Bible, Holy Spirit. By Quran, it's Muhammad. No, no, no. I'm talking Bible. Quran, for the time being, keep it aside. You don't believe in the Quran. <laughs> what Quran says, I know. We are talking about Bible. Where does the Bible say? Okay, if you say it's the Holy Spirit, let's read the context. What I quoted comes seven verses before. Seven verses before, Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number seven. It is expedient for you for a go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I go, shall he come? The criteria for this comforter to come is that Jesus Christ should go. If you say it's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came into the world. He was also there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. So this prophecy cannot refer to the Holy Spirit, sister. There is some problem in the understanding of the Bible. The criteria for the Holy Spirit is that Jesus Christ should go, peace be upon him. Unless he does not go, this, this comforter shall not come. So if you are thinking that this spirit and this comforter is the Holy Spirit, it is wrong. The Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ came in this world, peace be upon him. The Holy Spirit was there at the Feast of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was there in the womb of Elizabeth. Who says that? Bible says that. So sister, it cannot refer to Holy Spirit. Who does it refer to? <laughs> no comments. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. When Prophet Muhammad was given the revelation, peace be upon him, he did not say whatever he heard, he repeated. So this Holy Spirit is no one but talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hmm. Further, if you read in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse number 16, it says in Hebrew, Hikko Mamitakim, Vikulli Muhammadim, Zaidudi Zairai Baina Jerusalem. It says they translate Muhammadim, his word is there in the Old Testament, but they translate Muhammadim as altogether lovely. He is mentioned by name. It further mentions the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. When the book will be given to him, he will say, I am not learned. When the angel will say, read, he said, I am not learned. This is exactly what happened when Archangel Gabriel gave the book, Jibril al-Salam, gave, when, he, when the first revelation came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was said to Mekra, read. He said, man, I am not learned. Same thing what happened with Prophet Muhammad is prophesized in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse number 12. Which person said, when the angel said, read, he said, I am not learned. It is Prophet Muhammad. I'm only quoting Bible, I've not come to the Quran yet. You don't believe in the Quran, keep the Quran aside. Come to common terms as I send you. The only prophet that has praised Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he shall glorify me. Which prophet has glorified Jesus, peace be upon him, sister? Do you know the Quran has taken the name of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, 25 times? Yes, I do. 25 times by name. There is a chapter by the name of Maryam, the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. There is no chapter by the name of mother of, mother of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or the wife of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It is the name of Maryam alayhi salam. I'm asking you the question. The Bible says, he shall glorify me. Which prophet has glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? It is Prophet Muhammad. Okay. So why don't you believe in Prophet Muhammad, sister? So if you have to be a good Christian, if you have to, good, if you have to be a good Christian, it is compulsory you follow the teachings of Jesus Christ that another messenger is supposed to come, you have to follow him. So you cannot be a good Christian until you accept Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Sister, do you want to be a good Christian or not? Sure, sister, do you want to sure. be a good Christian or not? Sure. <laughs> So why don't you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? No, I believe. I love Jesus more than you, you know that? <laughs> Sister, yes. I love Jesus more than you. Okay. Because I follow his teachings. Okay. You know, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the, if you read the Bible, the Bible says that the woman should be covered. If you read the first Corinthians chapter number seven, verse five to seven, that the woman that uncovereth her hair, her hair should be shaved off. Bible is more strict than the Quran. No verse in the Quran says that the woman head should be shaved off. The Bible is more strict. Sister, have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? 
Sister, have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? Whom? Mary? Have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? Uh, it's, I don't believe in this, on the pictures which people are just sh showing. Fine, forget how she looks, but what does she wear? She's halfway open, yeah. So, in church, it's halfway open. Sorry? Her body is open. No, no, uh, is the head covered or not? Uh, in churches, yes. Yes, it's covered. So that is how a true Christian should wear. The head is covered, the complete body is covered. You see, if you have a look at the nuns, how are the nuns dressed up? Hmm. So sister, my question is that why don't you follow the teachings of Jesus? And why don't you, then Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad. So you should believe. So do you believe in Prophet Muhammad, sister? No, I do believe what, what is said in Quran. No, do you believe that he's the messenger of God? Yes, I do believe. Hello, then you're a Muslim, sister. <laughs> if you believe that there is one God, and if you believe that Jesus is not God and he's a messenger of God, and you believe that Muhammad is a messenger of God, you're a Muslim. The two minimum things required for anyone to enter the fold of Islam is believe there's one God and worship no one else besides that God. And believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, also believe Jesus is a messenger. And then the practice comes slowly. First you take admission, then nursery, first standard, second standard, slowly, slowly. <laughs> so if you believe there's one God, and you believe that Jesus is a messenger, and you also believe Muhammad is a messenger, peace be upon him, then you're a Muslim sister. <laughs> Would you like to say it in Arabic? Mm -hmm. Would you like to say it in Arabic? Yeah, okay. I agree. Say in Arabic that you believe there's one God and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God. Okay. Okay, sister? Okay. So is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Not at all. So doing out of your own free will? Free will. Okay, I'll say in Arabic and I repeat it. Ashadu. <laughs> Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Again? Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That Prophet Muhammad, Prophet, Prophet, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, is the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah, sister, sister, become Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that may He guide you more, and He grant you Jannah, and Inshallah, sister, do keep on studying about Islam, and when you read the Bible, see to it that you follow the red letters of Jesus Christ, peace be upon Him, and if you are a good Christian, you have to become a Muslim. That's the question that was asked to me, that can a Christian go to paradise? A Christian can only go to paradise if he follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and also follow that, to follow the last and final messenger that's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sister, that may he grant you Jannah, and inshallah, through you, let other peoples come to the straight path. Jazakallah, sister. May Allah reward you. Thank you.